Hello, welcome to MWCNC Designs. My name is Mason, and today is video number two of a series going over the Shaper Trace and all of its use cases. Let's dive in. Okay, so the purpose of using the Trace today is to take my assortment of Torx and Allens that I do not have organizers for and to um, create an SVG file that I can put into Carbite Create to create a cutting profile and then I can cut it out on my Shapeoko Pro. And just to keep it real, this is how my drawer normally looks. I also have an assortment of adapters for ratchets that are just loosely laying around in my roll cart. Some of the smaller adapters I'll put on this magnet. It only works until I roll the cart around and then a bump knocks them off. Okay, so from OnlineMetals.com I ordered two 12 inch by 4 inch by 3 quarter thick 6061 aluminum. Now I know the practical way would just be to use digital calipers to measure the diameter of each socket, um, but I wanted to showcase the use of the shaper trace and try to turn it into a one tool for everything with inside of its realm and to see exactly what is the capabilities of the shaper trace and what are its limitations. Do I believe that this was faster running with the shaper trace instead of just getting the measurements with the digital caliper? I don't know, I didn't actually keep track. I'm only doing this so I can find out the best use cases for the shaper trace. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna need to get is a piece of paper. Printer paper works just fine. And uh, this is actually what you draw your trace on. And the shaper trace sits over the top of it. I'm just going to place every socket just so that I know that I've traced it in order and I don't miss one. I just wanted to show the process that I would use if you do have a set of digital calipers. All you have to do is find the widest point of the socket and get its known diameter. This one's 0.9 and the next socket's about 0.7. But this video is about challenging the shaper trace and all that it can do. So I'm just going to trace each socket. I also labeled each socket and the size um, so that when it gets pulled into Carbite Create, I have an easier workflow to try to make this as efficient as possible. Using your camera, click the link that the QR code provides. Click allow so that Shaper Tools can have access to your camera. And then just make sure that the trace border is within inside your screen. And all you have to do is just take a photo and it will instantly switch it over to an SVG. I save the file to Shaper Files so that I can access it on either my computer or my phone. Next I'm going to download the SVG to my Mac and drag and drop it into Carbite Create. Now that the SVG is inside Carbite Create, I'm going to use a circle tool to just make a circle around each sketch that's a little bit bigger than the sketch so that the sockets have a little relief. As you can see there's incomplete circles or jagged lines and that has to do with tracing the sockets with a pin. This part of the video may be the only spot where it would make more sense and have a smoother workflow to just use digital calipers to get the diameters of each socket. But I would say using a caliper there could be human error when it comes to typing in the sizes. So the shape or trace is providing a known diameter through the sketch that we can be confident in for a cut profile. Okay, so I skipped through this next part of the video just to save some time on the length of this video. Uh, essentially I just took all those circles that I traced, lined them up, spaced them evenly how I wanted to, build my profile. I added text uh, 
to each each socket so I know exactly which one it is. I'll only be using two bits. One of them is a quarter inch carbide bit and that'll do the outer perimeter and all of the pockets for every socket. And then the other bit I'll be using is a drag bit from Carbide Create where it's just going to etch in the text items for each size. Everyone has their own method but when it comes to surfacing I like to use blue painters tape and super glue. This provides a very strong hold down method so that while you're surfacing you don't have to worry about hitting any of your work holding tools. In the comments below, share your guys' thoughts on the Shaper Trace, and also if you guys have any other ideas or challenges that I can use to continue testing this tool. I was able to use the Shaper Trace to finally get all of these loose sockets organized and in their home location. And I take that as a success. If you enjoyed this video, 
hit the like button, comment, and subscribe. And thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.